Adam and his wife, Lena, are a happy, almost perfect little family. They were blessed with a son named Nara. Adam is an architect. On that night, Nara is busy building his dollhouse because he also wants to be like his father, a great architect. He is a smart and active child, but behind all that, he suffers from asthma. That day is Adam's birthday, and they celebrate it simply yet memorably for Adam. Lena then gives a special gift to her beloved husband, an expensive watch, and Adam really likes it and fits his hand perfectly. Soon after, someone knocks on their door. At first, Adam thought it was another surprise from Lena, but Lena denied it, and she did not know who was coming. When Adam opens the door, some strangers he doesn't recognize stand in front of him. They ask for someone named Prio, and again, Adam doesn't know who Prio is because it's just his family and no one else lives in his house. Adam closes the door to the strangers, feeling that they came to the wrong address, but they force their way into his house. They knock him to the ground and then tied his feet and hands with duct tape. It turns out those men are robbers. Each of them shares the task. Carney, the man who knocked on the door earlier, is in charge of entering the room and then ransacking and looting all the money and other valuables while the others deal with Lena, who screams continuously. All Adam could do was watch as the robbers beat her up. One of them then looks for Nara, who is hiding in his room. Nara screams out loud, causing the robbers to panic and cover his mouth. Due to his severe asthma, Nara was unable to hold on as the robber covered his mouth and accidentally killed the little boy. The robbers are shocked to find out that Nara is dead, as this is not what they had planned. A few moments later, Lena rises again and stabs Carney with a piece of shard, hitting him right in the eye. Sadly, she couldn't survive the knife wound in her abdomen and died. Adam, who is helpless, could only watch the horror that happened to his loved ones. Two years after the incident, Adam's life is completely shattered. He seems to have lost hope. Losing his loved ones had been the hardest blow to him, and he was truly at the lowest point of his life. His deep sadness and anger seemed to be ingrained in his body it is hard for him to forget the incident. As time goes by, Adam slowly begins to open up and try to heal, and he decides to return to work. However, it is not easy for him to return to his normal life. On the one hand, he needs a job, but on the other hand, he still needs time to get back on his feet. He then requests that Kayan, who happens to be his best friend and boss in the office, give him some more time so that he can refocus on his work. Luckily, Adam has a true friend like Kian who knows his condition and state. Kian finds it impossible to force him to continue working, so he gives him a business card. He recommends that he see a psychiatrist. Despite the fact that Adam had already been to many psychiatrists before, Kian convinced him that he had to see this specific psychiatrist as he was sure that this person would be able to help him. For the past two years, Adam has been living a solitary life, during which he has been tormented by his wounds and grief. In his every daydream, the memory of the incident always reappears. Actually, deep down in his heart, there was a desire to forget the past incidents. He then thinks it wouldn't hurt if he tried to see the psychiatrist recommended by his best friend. Long story short, Adam finally sees Amanda, the psychiatrist suggested by Kian. Amanda's way of dealing with Adam is different. She doesn't go straight to the essence of the problem Adam is facing. She makes him feel comfortable. And after that, she asks him small, simple questions while monitoring his psychological condition. That way, she is able to diagnose the severity of his trauma. Actually, Amanda already knew Adam's story from Kian about his sad past. It is just that she wants to hear it directly from Adam himself. According to her, to fight trauma from the past, he must have the courage to recall the events. Although it feels hard, Adam finally starts to tell Amanda more about his past. After his first therapy session ends, Adam returns to his office. He then books an online taxi to get to his office. Along the way, a conversation takes place between him and the taxi driver named Frankie. When he glances in the rearview mirror, he seems to recognize the driver's face. He then proceeds to look at the driver's hand. There is a tattoo on his hand. To confirm the driver's face, he then opens the online taxi application and looks at his profile picture. Adam's suspicion is confirmed. Frankie, the driver, was the robber who had killed his wife. In the middle of the trip, Adam diverts the route and asks Frankie to take a different route, claiming that the road they are about to take is usually jammed. Who knows what Adam had in mind at the time? He deliberately diverted the route to his house. Frankie finally comes to his senses, and he is reminded of an incident in the past while he is passing through Cambodia Street. 
he finally realizes that the passenger he is with is the woman's husband and the father of the child he killed. Adam then chokes Frankie to death with the seatbelt. Afterwards, he drives the car and Frankie's body to a distant and deserted place. He also wipes off all his fingerprints to eliminate any trace of his crime and takes Frankie's cell phone and wallet. The next day, Adam can easily find the other robbers on Frankie's cell phone. As a side note, Adam actually doesn't intend to take revenge, but after he was accidentally reunited with one of the robbers, his grudge and anger that had been pent up became unbearable, so he finally decided to kill Frankie. It seems that he had other plans, and he felt that the trauma he experienced could be healed if he killed all the robbers. He felt relieved and satisfied after he killed Frankie. The following day, Adam goes to a car repair shop after getting the address from a photo on Frankie's cell phone. The man was the one who had smothered Nara to death. On the other hand, Frankie's body is finally found by some children who accidentally see a car parked in the forest. When Adam visits the car repair shop, it just so happens that the man he's looking for is the owner of it, and he pretends to get his car repaired. However, he didn't attack him at first, he waited for the right time to launch all his plans. While waiting for his car to be repaired, they were having some small talk, and the man told him about his dark past. He admitted that he used to do anything to survive in Jakarta, but he didn't say that he used to be a robber. The man said he had repented and wanted to live on the right path. Up until that point, he still hadn't realized that Adam was the father of the child he killed. After everything is done, the man asks Adam to return to his workshop at any time if there is still a problem with his car, and he says that his workshop is open until the end of the night. Hearing that, Adam felt like he was given a chance and said he would come back again. Adam meets Amanda again for therapy. During the therapy session, Adam recounts happy times with his family. He starts to tell his story, and this scene is really sad. He vents all the things he remembers about the night his wife and son were killed. He also remembers the faces of the robbers who came that night. Since that night, his life has been empty, and he doesn't know what to do with it. The other day, Adam stopped by a construction shop to buy a hammer, some pipes, some duct tape, and some pliers. He is completely consumed by his own lust. Later that evening, he visits the workshop of the man who killed his son. The man is by himself, and when he sees Adam coming with a hammer, he instantly remembers who Adam is. Though he admitted that he had repented and no longer committed crimes, what he had done was unforgivable. Adam then mercilessly tortures him. Just as Nara had suffered when he ran out of breath from being smothered by him, Adam then wrapped duct tape around his mouth, attached a pipe to his mouth, and connected it to the car's exhaust. He then ignites the car. The man died with his mouth filled with exhaust fumes. Adam's mental state recovered quickly after killing the men who murdered his wife and child. He even had the courage to offer himself to work with Kian again. Although he is not 100% recovered, Adam's condition looks better than it did some time ago. He begins to reorganize his life, which had fallen apart. He then goes to see Amanda, even if he has no therapy session to undertake. He intentionally wants to meet her to apologize and thank her for helping him. An intense conversation took place between them. It is revealed that Amanda is also a lonely person. She also lost her parents, who died in a car accident, and since then she has lived alone with her brother. But her brother is rarely home. He always goes out of town. As time goes by, they meet often, and love begins to grow between them. A couple of policemen investigating the murders of Frankie and the repair shop owner had been looking into the case, and their investigations led them to Adam. That morning, two policemen show up at Adam's house. They want to ask him some questions, as he was the last person to order an online taxi on the night of the incident. Adam is getting panicky, but thankfully, he manages to cover it up and try to stay calm. The police tell him that this is actually a cold case, as they will eventually close it as the murdered victims were wanted fugitives. Adam's peace of mind is unsettled once the police start investigating. He soon begins to clean up all the evidence. On the other hand, the police initiate a deeper investigation and open the files of past incidents. A fact comes to light. The murdered victims are related to Adam's family. The victims were the ones who robbed and killed Adam's wife and son. However, the police have not yet obtained strong evidence as to whether Adam killed them all. One day, Amanda invites Adam to her house, and she promises to cook something special for him. That afternoon, 
Adam comes to Amanda's house, and coincidentally, on that day, Amanda's brother is at her house after a long time of disappearing. How shocked Adam is when he finds out that Amanda's brother is Carney, the man who once robbed his house. In my personal, honest opinion, I feel Bane Wong is very suitable to play a psychopath. His attitude is cold and calm, but deadly. Adam doesn't know what to do. He feels like a mess. He is still covering up what Carney did from Amanda and is trying to hold back and act as if nothing happened. They then exchange pleasantries at the dining table. Carney then opens up to Adam, telling him that he had been missing because he had just gotten out of prison. The atmosphere instantly shifts and Amanda is left speechless. Apart from being a former criminal, it turns out that Carney is good at cooking. He later tries to get to know who Adam is, even though Amanda had told him about him before, and he knows that Adam is a widower. Adam's tears start to fall. He can no longer hold back his raging anger. With the excuse that he has an appointment with someone, Adam then leaves Amanda's house. The police are still on Adam's trail, and they later meet Amanda at her office. Amanda finally finds out what's going on with Adam. The police are also looking for additional information, but she didn't tell them about Adam's recent behavior, citing that Adam is her patient, and as a psychiatrist, she is obligated to keep her patient's diagnosis confidential. The anxiety is clearly visible on her face. She fears that Adam has committed murder. She then tries to play back some recordings of conversations between her and Adam some time ago, and then she tries to link all of Adam's stories with the murder until the moment Adam met his brother. She finally comes to the conclusion that it is indeed true that Adam killed all the robbers out of vengeance. That night, Adam returns to Amanda's house after he finds out that Amanda is still in her office. Carney is in the house alone. Meanwhile, on the other side, Amanda goes to Adam's house. Adam and Carney finally met again. Carney still has time to cut his hair, despite the situation, and then he returns to meet Adam with his bald head. He did it so that Adam could feel the sense of tragedy that night again. Adam points a gun at Carney, which Carney deliberately puts in front of Adam. Carney then sincerely apologizes to Adam for all the evil he has done to his family. He says that he is deeply sorry for what he has done. Carney tells Adam to think about his future and forget about the past. Apparently, the gun Adam is holding is empty, and a fierce fight between them is inevitable. In the end, Carney is knocked down, and Adam rushes to tie him up with duct tape, just as Carney once did to him. Just as he is about to smash Carney with a hammer, a little boy's voice calls out to Carney, calling him Dad Carney's son and wife are there in front of Adam, and at the sight of them, he begins to break down and can't bring himself to kill Carney. Carney is crying, asking his wife and son to go away. He begs Adam not to hurt them. He is fine if Adam wants to kill him, but not to hurt his wife and son. A few moments later, Amanda arrives and tries to stop Adam. Amanda's words make Adam fall helpless, although he is overcome by lust, vengeance, and anger. In the end, he regains his self-control. At the end of the story, Adam surrenders to the police, as does Carney, who is arrested for his past crimes of killing Adam's wife and son. Throughout his way to the police station, Adam finds himself laughing after what he has done. He just keeps on laughing like crazy.